Hey, welcome back to Hostify. My name's Alex, and today we're going to look at the recommended settings for IoT devices within Unify. So we get a lot of questions about how to set up IoT devices and what Wi-Fi settings is best to have. So you could either have 2.4 gigahertz running only for IoT devices, uh, dedicated SSIDs, and that sort of thing. So, so before we get started into looking how to set up Unify, we need to understand how IoT devices connect to the Wi-Fi networks. Pretty much all IoT devices use 2.4 gigahertz to connect to the Wi-Fi networks. Uh, this is from air conditioning units, smart plugs, uh, light bulbs, and that sort of thing. Uh, I, I haven't come across many that use 5 gigahertz only, um, if any at all, uh, and not even any of them use both at the same time. So it tends to be that they only use 2.4 gigahertz. So taking that into consideration, there are some things we can do to have Unify separate those devices, have them connect a bit better. The way Unify broadcasts its Wi-Fi networks, you've got B SSIDs, uh, so every AP broadcasts the same SSID, and devices can only see one SSID at the same time, and then they know which AP to connect to and row in between them. If you have problems with IoT devices hopping around different APs, it'll be that those devices don't have the software to understand the separate BSSIDs that are being broadcast, and even if there's an AP in the same room as it, if you've got the same SSID for each AP. So what you really need to do is have a, a separate IoT SSID for each AP you have broadcasting. Uh, so, for example, if you have an AP in the kitchen, make a new SSID called Kitchen IoT or something similar and have that, a that SSID broadcast on only the one access point at a time. So we're going to go to the Unify network application. I've got a Unify switch and I've got a UAP AC light. I'm going to go to settings and so I've got two SSIDs right now, guest and hostify. I'm going to make a new one called IoT. Uh, default network, that's fine for this purpose. And then, so you can create a new group. I've only got the one AP on this particular controller, but I'm going to say uh, IoT network there, broadcasting on that one AP only. Save changes. And then we go to the manual settings down below. And what we want to do is set it to 2.4 gigahertz only, and it'll turn off the 5 gigahertz. Uh, BSSS transition, that's fine to leave on. The DTI MM periods, the data control rates, that's all fine to do. Add Wi-Fi network, and we go get rid of the all APs as well. So that'll be broadcasting on the one AP only, and what we can do is connect our IoT devices to that SSID by itself, and what you'll find is the, those devices won't be hopping around each AP all the time and causing problems. It's also worth bearing in mind that if you have a lot of IoT devices, using a separate VLAN for those devices will help reduce the amount of broadcast traffic that you have on that one network. So uh, if you make a new subnet, new VLAN for those I IoT devices, it will keep that traffic separate. And what we can do it later on is we can even separate the traffic for those devices so they can't even see the main network if you're not too sure about the traffic that's being broadcast on those devices. Another thing to do is uh, consider using 5 gigahertz only for all your client devices. Having 2.4 gigahertz enabled for your main SSID can create some issues. So if you tend to have some speed issues, a lot of times it will be that the device you've got is, is latched on the 2.4 gigahertz network uh, it's generally a crowded, a more crowded uh, spectrum to use. If you have 5 gigahertz broadcasting only for your client devices, you'll find that things are a lot more smooth. Next thing to look at is the 2.4 gigahertz channel planning and power. Uh, so in most countries, 2.4 gigahertz spectrum range is pretty small. Here in the UK, we have uh, through 1 through 13, uh, but generally it's 1, 6, and 11 are the three non-overlapping 2.4 gigahertz channels. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz you want to lower the power sometimes on the access points. It's a much lower frequency, so it'll actually propagate further. Uh, do some experimenting to see what power levels work the best. Generally, more power outputs on IPs do not always result in a good wireless experience. So what, to, what you can do is go to the devices, access point, and settings. And you can see here, if you untick the manage by global AP settings, you'll be able to set the custom channel and the custom power for that access point. You can even do a custom power level from all the way from minus four, all the way from ah, all the way from four to twenty, and then same thing you can do on the five gigahertz. You can go between twenty, forty, eighty megahertz. Uh, I would generally recommend forty megahertz for that. On two point four gigahertz, use twenty megahertz. And again, you can choose the channels. Some of them are DFS, and then you can set the power level. Last thing to do is make an NOT network, so a nothing of things. It's sort of a sort of a nickname given to this this type of network basically it's sort of a locked down ssid and vlan uh, if you've got a uxg pro um, or usg you can use the vlan and firewall rules 
on those devices to lock down those VLANs and also you can put some traffic restriction rules in place for the UXG Pro. So let's look at those traffic restrictions we can do. So as mentioned we got we can make an NOT network to have a nothing of things network. Uh, so what we're going to do is go to the settings tab, go to networks. I'm going to make a new network called NOT. So we're going to leave the auto uh, stuff on, on auto and then press add. That's VLAN 4 for our new network, so it automatically applies a new a new VLAN for it. And we've got our main default network on VLAN 0, essentially VLAN 1. So we're going to go down to traffic management. And it's got a lot easier since I did it with the USG a few years ago. I used to have to do file rules and sort of do everything manually. Now Unify can do most of that for you, which is really good. So we go to rules. And what we're going to do is go to block. And then category is going to be internet. And then target is going to be the NOT network we've got. And it should be schedule always. So we're going to set that rule. Next rule we're going to do, we don't want the NOT network from accessing our main default network where our Unify devices are. So again, block, local network, NOT to and from all local networks and then add rule or target sorry is going to be our default network add rule and what that's going to do now is say those NAT devices cannot access the internet they cannot access our main default network and then there are some other things you can do to allow multicast for HomeKit devices so they can have access to the multicast DNS requests such as for what HomeKit users. So that's been a look at how to set up Unify for IoT devices and also those pesky NOT devices. The full written version of this video can be found in the link down below and in the top right hand corner. So be sure to check that out. That's what we've been using for this guide. If you want to learn more about Hostify, have a look at Hostify.com. We do hosting for Unify, UISP and now TP-Link Amada. Hire an expert today with Hostify Pro. Take a look at Hostify.com forward slash pro and we can help with many of your projects. If you've got any support and queries, don't forget to contact our team at support at Hostify.com. Follow us on Twitter at Hostify underscore net. Thanks for watching this video. My name's Alex, and we'll see you again next time.